going on everybody? We are currently out here in Japan shooting a new parkour POV project for Hello My Name Is. Here's the Ampersound squad. We're going to be here for a month, traveling Japan and doing a parkour POV. Join us on our journey. Woo! The arrival in Japan was so exciting. I didn't actually think I'd be able to get there because, you know, who on earth thinks you're going to get sponsors and go to Japan? It's just absolutely outrageous, completely beyond my imagination. So I was super excited. It was like super overwhelming and like sensory overloading. It was like nothing I've ever seen before. Tokyo is a crazy, crazy place. Um, when the first drink you buy is called Pekari Sweat, you know, you're, you know you've gone somewhere a bit different from anything before. Japan is a place that I've wanted to go to since before I even knew places exist, really. With the company Hello My Name is all work with, that was like the dream to eventually go to Japan. So even like, that was like the dream. Bright lights everywhere and noises everywhere, people everywhere, just it was unreal. Yeah, and in the first few days, I kind of forgot what I'd been, what I'd gone to Japan for. We were having too much fun. We're here at the crossing in Shibuya. When Scott asked me if there's anything I wanted to do when I came to Tokyo, I told him this was it because of my love for the Fast and Furious films. And here I am, buzzing. Compared to England, uh, Japan culture is so different. We're lucky we had Scott as well translating everything and showing us around. So they say that at this crossing, this is the busiest pedestrian crossing on the planet. And every time the lights change, a thousand people cross this crossing. You're going to see me in the middle of this doing some flips as soon as those lights turn green. Also, while we were out there, we had a couple of birthdays, Scott's and Harrison's. Um, we went to Shinjuku on Scott's birthday because he wanted to take us to the batting centre. We were all terrible, but we picked it up in the end. We had so much fun, explored so much, and yeah, just ate a ton, played baseball, drank, <laughs> um, and yeah, loads of people come out to celebrate, which is great fun. A few days in, once we've had a bit of fun, we went to Mission. The Mission gym is incredible, and the guys there are all super, super lovely and super welcoming. And then we met the guy who fits all of the glasses uh, that are produced by Hello My Name Is. To be honest, I did not realise the level of work it takes to just put one pair of glasses together. And seeing him do that firsthand was unreal. So we're just deciding on which glasses to use for the hero. I think we're going to use this pair for Connor. And this is because Connor is usually using a blue and grey kind of colour palette anyway. Quality, mate. You like them, yeah? Yeah, they do stay on as well. And then for Harrison, who is our new POV hero. He's going to be wearing this pair. So Hello had previously worked with us making a POV out in London and this video was a sequel to that. And now we've gone from London, Liverpool and Stevenage to Japan where we've got actual Japanese freerunners acting as gangsters chasing Harrison and me. So it was like it's progressed from a few pairs of glasses and not really knowing what we were doing to a trip to Japan filming a crazy project. What's going on everybody? We're currently at Zojoji Temple. Tomorrow is our first shoot day and we're shooting here. So we're quickly just checking it out, seeing what's what, getting a few ideas in the brain. And obviously, look how beautiful this is. So when it actually came round to shooting, we'd all had about a week off of training because we'd been having too much fun. Um, second clip of the video was this sketchy jump over a drop which went down about two storeys into a car park. Um, I did it fine twice. Uh, and then on the third take, overshot the jump and flailed around in the air, which you'll see in the video. Landed on my heel funny, and that was it. For the rest of the trip, I was hobbling around, trying to make do. The first day was mixed emotions. It was exciting to start the project, but it was also, you know, Connor got injured, there was a ton of pressure, it was rainy, crap weather. Um, but yeah, that was, a, that was a tough day. One, one take by accident, punched you in the face. Yeah. That? I've take. actually, my jaw is actually That's killing mad. me. I've got that a bit of a mad. jaw ache, mate. If we use and that. And I think it's because Shane just knocked the camera. It's because he wanted it real, so he was like, hit me. But I was, it wasn't full pelt, but it was a yeah, bit. Just a cheeky one. But not in the face. You meant here, but I just, yeah. you know, 
<laughs> getting yeah, older yeah. and I'm getting on and on. It's all it. The team have all wrapped up for today. Thank you. Day one. So cool. Done. Enjoy dinner. See you later, lads. <laughs> Yokohama, what a day. That was interesting, really interesting. So, start off the day on the top of this roof. I was tied to a chair and um, I was putting a bag over my head, ripping it off for the opening sequence of the shoot. We were shooting the first scene of the video where I rescued Harrison from the Japanese gangsters. And yeah, I had to drop from above, land and put out this taser to taser Yakawa. But unfortunately, I had some teething problems with this, with this taser. I tried every pocket. Some of them it fell out before I dropped. Some of them I dropped and it come out. Other times I just couldn't grab it quick enough or it got stuck. There's probably about 100 takes of me trying to pull this taser out. You know, it's quite a technical day because like later on in the day, I'm trying to put like glasses onto a camera. Like, can you think about that? Like, you've got a pair of glasses trying to go onto one lens and like the lens is at my chin. I'm like, <laughs> that's going all wrong. And at the end of that day, we got a beautiful scene. It was actually at sunset and the scene was unreal. All the uh, Japanese gangsters were coming at us and we did a nice roof gap into a nice roll, but it was just, it was too dark by that point and we just had to completely cut it. So we have Kaho with us. Kaho is our fabulous trip organizer, producer extraordinaire, making sure that we get where we have to go on time, as close to on time as possible. So we went to Osaka via the bullet train um, Carho took us on and that was an experience and a half. It's rapid. The bullet train was crazy. In England on the train, when you go around the bend, the train slows down for the bend. In Japan, the bend is cambered so the train can go as fast as it wants. I actually got my phone out and went on ways to see how fast we were going. And it's like 200 miles an hour. It's the like, fastest thing you're going to be on other than a pl in a plane. Jammed in between these two Japanese blokes sleeping, trying not to make any noise. So, waking up at 6.30 in the morning. Go and shoot day number three, and look at the view today. Osaka. Osaka. Currently on the roof of the ATC in Osaka, and we are filming a phenomenal uh, rooftop scene. We've got a little roof slide over here, and then there's a roof gap just over there. So this roof gap is like, you're on top of this little box on the roof and you're running and jumping over this gap. Um, and you, it's just a lot of impact. It's not the biggest thing in the world, but the impact is just on another level. Yeah, after a couple of preps um, and we give it a send, it felt like we were in, felt like something from James Bond. It looks like something from James Bond as well when you see the behind the scenes, but the, the camera doesn't do it justice being up there. And no, like, to be allowed to do that as well, it was just crazy. Oh, so sick. How's it feel? Yeah, good. That good. Sick. That's my favourite thing in the POV so far. I think it, that will be my favourite thing. Last few years, I've had like my ACL injury, and thinking about that little gap Connor and I just done, it just feels incredible to be having it all back and getting into it properly again. Just makes me think about how much I love parkour. All right. So today we're in what I think is the best parkour spot in Japan. I'm very excited. They haven't seen this. They've seen some videos and stuff, but they're going to see the spot now. Oh my God, that's so much. I didn't know Japan had spots. Where did that come from? When we initially said we were going out to Japan, I was like, oh, are there things to do in Japan? Um, but yeah, what the hell? Japan's got spots, man. I'm sure that that's a parkour park and you're lying to us. It's like a waterfall kind of structure, but almost probably three stories high, some parts. I never knew there was anything like that in Japan. Um, it was a shame that we were shooting, really, because I'd love to have just trained there with fresh legs. Um, but yeah, even Kaho saw how much fun parkour was and we got her having a go, and then she picked it up quite quickly, quicker than I've seen some lads from the UK pick it up. Yeah, it was really good to get her involved. Yeah, it was a really cool spot. I did a lot of training before putting my costume on and then realised after putting that on that, because it, it restricted me so much, the line me and Harrison had planned, we had to cut it down a bit. Yeah, we're shooting there and there's just like, there's loads of stuff you can do, endless opportunities and ways. If you ever go to Japan, go to the concrete park, because it's awesome. It's our second Sunday in Japan <laughs> and we've got another day off. We're spending it at Osaka Castle. It was built by Toyotomi Hideyoshi in 1583 and completed in 1597. He was a samurai and the second great unifier of Japan.
When I went to Osaka Castle, that is a castle like no other. That is wicked. I even got to dress up as a samurai and wave a katana around a bit. And then, um, yeah, we tried some really cool food as well. Well, me and Scott did. Shane had a little bit, but Scott's rule for me was he would let me try something and only tell me what it is after I've eaten it, which was quite fun. We've got a candied strawberry, cherry blossom flavoured ice cream sandwich. We've got dango. Takoyaki. This is some Japanese corn. Had to be done. Let's go. Tastes like a banana. Now the chocolate's nice. Blue chocolate. I've never eaten blue chocolate before, but why Japanese people? Yeah, the food in Japan was as, as I expected. Um, but I also enjoyed it more than I thought I would, eating some of the weird stuff. I'm glad Scott didn't tell me what it was before I ate it. Shane's first Japanese sushi but experience. We, I haven't been told what this is. Yeah, but I've eaten it without being told. What is it? It's a beautiful looking it piece of sushi. Like, it doesn't look like a cake, does it? Just I think you should try it. He's definitely enjoying it. Is it too nice or is it just nice now? <laughs> With the music. Well, well done, mate. Well done. <laughs> right, now time for the big reveal. What is it? What, like is, it? It? what is it, Scott Bass? Creamed crab. Oh. oh. Creamed crab. I like crabs. I never knew you could eat fish that didn't taste fishy. Um, the sushi, yeah, it was, it's lovely. I'm definitely converted to that. In Osaka, we went to see uh, Dotenbori. You would have seen in films with all the lights and stuff along the river. And that massive picture, that guy. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Hello, my name is Connor, and I'm doing Gachapon. This thing called Gachapon, these things where you put money in, turn it, and you get this little toy of different places and they're literally everywhere. These machines are everywhere. There's a whole, there's whole stores dedicated to gachapons. Went there, found the machine, figurines of Ninja Warrior Course, or Sasuke, as it's known in Japan. And I started, I was like willing to spend every penny I have to get the full set of the Ninja Warrior Course. And I did it. It only cost me like 100,000 yen. Now it's probably, that's only like tenner. <laughs> so we're currently in Kobe, and we're at the Hello My Name Is pop-up store. It's currently travelling around Japan and this is the first time we've managed to see it and view all of the different selections of glasses in person as opposed to seeing little pictures of them online. It was really cool to see something that we've worked on for so many years coming together and being able to look at all the different pairs physically rather than trying to design them online and then get sent. And the technology they're using is like with an iPad you can try on all the different pairs of glasses and then order them there. Um, and it was really nice to meet everyone that worked for Hello My Name Is as well. So uh, basically, when I come on this shoot, um, I brought trainers that were pretty much dead and we didn't quite know how close to death they were. Turns out, I started poking a hole through the bottom. And that means that every shoot day, the hole is going to keep getting bigger and bigger and the shoe, it's just going to be obvious and disgusting in the shots. So we decided to get some new shoes, but new shoes are going to look very different to old shoes. So the way to fix that is a bit of this. <laughs> and that will look a little bit better in the shots. Obviously, we'll, we'll do some moderating. We've got to find out the, the balance. Lovely job. But look. You look old now, mate. They're looking older. Compare them to that, look. Look. That actually looks like that'll go oh, now. Cut. Yeah. Yeah? Amazing. Before we started the project, I, I said to Scott, I was like, I'd like to get some climbing in there. So then um, we went to a space called the Clean Centre. The Clean Centre is a disused recycling unit. The Clean Centre, which is not clean at all. <laughs> Maybe it was once, but nothing, even we weren't clean when we left there. But yeah, we shot a really cool climb with Shane. So Harrison's running up the stairs with Connor, doing a climb as well, and then I climb and I'm matching their speed, and there's that point of there's a rail, and I'm like reaching up dynamically. It must be about three stories high, and it's kind of like Harrison's looking at the same time as you see. But it's great to have that piece in the film. Bit sketchy at times, some of it. I cat passed over this 
this little pipe. And from where I've got the GoPro in my mouth, I can't really see the floor. I'm trying to look up at people, capture all the moments. And I'm just trusting there's nothing on the floor, but there's this little metal nugget. I don't even know what it's for. I just land on it, roll my ankle, it's just gone. And I was in agony and I was like, oh my gosh, is this shoot over? But yeah, I, I strapped it up, carried on a day, went to the hospital, get a little steroid injection and good to go. And uh, we also met the boss of Hello, My Name Is uh, Masaki. When I, I actually felt nervous meeting the guy because uh, I wanted the parkour that he was going to see that day to be good. But yeah, it turns out we were doing some wicked lines. The whole day fit so perfectly and I think Masaki really enjoyed that. How are you finding this location, Very Connor? Good. Dark. It's wicked, it looks sick, it's dark, and then when you put sunglasses on, it's very dark. Let's go. Got ya. <laughs> Day X, we went to Spicy Warehouse, and um, yeah, it's Spicy Warehouse for a reason. Well, obviously it used to make spices, but you go in there and you just hit with this wave of cinnamon smell. It is interesting. <laughs> Oh my God. I can set it again. Jesus. What? You can smash it straight into the wall. Um, but yeah, that was cool. Like we got to film this wicked line there where um, I'm running through with Connor and Connor comes over and all of a sudden Corky just pops out of nowhere and does like a touchdown rise cork or I can't, can't even remember, but it was just, I remember looking at him and being like, Corky, what, where did this come from? What are you doing? <laughs> You're a weapon. And then yeah, so uh, Connor and Corky fight and then all of a sudden, a sword gets thrown over to Shane. Shane vaults over this rail, and then Shane and I fight with the sword. And then at the end of the scene, I'm going towards, stabbing towards the camera. We was, we was practicing this take over and over and over, and like every time Shane went to stab me, oh, it just felt too far away on the GoPro. And I remember on the last take, I was like, Shane, actually try and stab me. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really go for you, and hopefully you move backwards. And I felt it, like, I get to that point, I go to stab him, and it's literally, I see the camera moving back. He just sent it and it, the sword felt like it comes so close to my face. And I was like, if he didn't move back, man. But um, no, it was great to have that scene in, it was like amazing. There's like so many parts of this, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And we gained momentum as we were shooting it. And it was just, it was getting increasingly more exciting, wasn't it? Hello, my name is Connor. And we've just finished wrapping at the Spicy Warehouse. There's been hops, there's been drops. The guns have been popping off. But as always, Ampy Sound, we come out on top and we're off to the shop. Yeah. What would be your favourite shot so far if you had to choose? Oh, this? easily my favourite red friend, Yakua. <laughs> my current favourite shot, Yakua. Absolutely getting launched is my favourite shot. That shot is phenomenal. I'll put it in now. Look at this. Look at him go. <laughs> wow, he went far. Dude, how far did Yakua just Mate, fly? I absolutely okay. sent him. I, honestly, I felt so bad. I just kicked him so hard and I just ran off as if I didn't care. He went But miles. in my head, I was like, I can't stop the cut here. I was like, this, this shot has to be finished. Yeah. Has to be he finished. He got up and he goes, no damage. <laughs> Hey, British people. We're shooting in Kyoto. Look, beautiful traditional buildings. Yay. Yeah, so Kyoto was, once we arrived there, it was clear it was, well, a really quiet, most quiet place we've been so far in Japan. Yeah, Kyoto is, it feels like you're stepping back in time. It's like stayed the same since you can picture it like a thousand years ago, still looking like that. Yeah, no, it was unreal. There was so much to do there. All the cherry blossoms started coming out. We stayed in this old Japanese house, which was incredible. But the buildings are really old and like traditional and the shrines are beautiful. We went around a few of them and me and Scott went to one and watched the sunset. We saw all the gates as well. We're in Kyoto, going to Shimi Niari. What is it? Fushimi Inari. Fushimi Inari Temple. It's got thousands and thousands of gates. We're not walking through all of them. Shane maybe is walking through all of them because it's Shane and he wants to do stuff. When we filmed the last video, we also just took some pictures in London of me in the glasses and they photoshopped me into this, into these arches. And now, two years later, I'm here for real. They're gone. They worship the fox, the fox god in this shrine. Yanari, Yanari, I think it's called. Just look at it. This is like, you know, what you see on the telly. 
in it. But we're here in real life, touching, smelling, feeling, not just seeing. And we're trying to bring it to life for you on the screen. Let us know if we do. Don't let us know. I don't need to know. Get out of here. Let us know in the comments below. He's off. There was a nice street where me and Harrison were running away from the um, Yakuza, and then I did a flip over Carho. Yeah, it was cool to get her involved as well. She actually, because she was scared, she tried to move out of my way, but actually moved like, further into my way. We shot quite a bit in Kyoto. There was loads, went to see loads of temples. We went to see the, a little bit of a bamboo forest, which was really cool. I've never seen a bamboo forest before, so unreal. Made me feel like I was five years old watching some films. Kyoto overall was a really cool place and like really nice, chilled out, traditional vibe. Really, really enjoyed Kyoto. Baby, just to let me down. Let me down. Let me around them. Worst of all. Worst of all. Yeah, so then we went to, we went north of Kyoto about, uh, well, about an hour and a half in the car. Carho drove us um, to meet Misaki for dinner. Oh my word, what a guy. I'm sitting there and there's like all this fish, sea snails, oysters and stuff in this bowl when we come in. And I'm just like, Scott, you've told Misaki I'm a fussy eater, haven't you? And he's like, um, I think he knows. And I'm just, it's like we're sitting there for like 10, 15 minutes. I'm like, oh, please, please, can I eat today? Can I eat? And then all of a sudden, Masaki brings out all this fried chicken, this beautiful steak. Oh, it was like one of the best meals I've had in my life. That was a highlight. And uh, then the next day, we went to the factory. Where are we? Kia Tango. Kia Tango. Yeah. Kia Tango. Today, we're in Kia Tango at the Hello, My Name Is Glasses factory. We finally get to see how the amazing glasses we've been receiving for almost two years are made. Let's go. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. It was really cool to see the process behind how the glasses are made. They literally do make everything from scratch. They cut the moulds out of metal and then put the like plastic in to make the frames. So here we have the machine, which is basically bending all of the wire to precise detail for every bit of the frame of the glasses. So the arms, the nose piece, and it just kind of gradually works it around and like feeds it into the right position and bends it into place and then it just slices it and it cuts it off and it just drops into the magical box down below. This is a machine that laser prints whatever you want onto the arms of the glasses. You won't see it on camera but we've got Hello My Name is made in Kyoto, Japan and now we've been hassling Masaki to put whatever we want on the other, other side of the glasses so I've got Ampi sound, my name in English, and then my name in Japanese. I just finished visiting the factory. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Masaki <laughs> has been a hero, and we are very grateful to him. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Today we are in Nara. Where are we going, Harry? What are we going to Mate, see? Mate, we are off to see some temples, but more importantly, we're going to go see some soggy deers. Soggy deers. We're under the umbrella because the weather is terrible. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. So we, we also went to Nara, which is the old capital of Japan. Um, and it's easy to see why. It was, it was an amazing, like, really beautiful place. The main reason people go there is to see the deer. And you think, oh, there'll be a few deers, but there's literally so many everywhere. It was raining as well, so they were a bit soggy, but we still got stuck in, stroking them. Harrison got selfies, Shane got a kiss. What happens in Nara stays in Nara. <laughs> I kiss a deer. <laughs> <laughs> they go crazy for these little cookies that you buy there. Petting a deer was probably my favourite thing of that whole trip. Honestly, I've got, just from that day alone, I've probably got about like 200 photos. <laughs> <laughs> and we went around some of the temples in there and one of them was the biggest, one of the largest wooden structures in the world and it like housed this massive bronze Buddha inside. It's, it was just massive. Like you're in awe of it when you go in there. It's just mad. The weather's been terrible today, so much so that Shane had a little accident which the clip will be inserted here. Let's show them. <laughs> Thank you for joining me in Japan for that epic adventure. Go on, give us a 12, mate. Never 
As Jeff Britton says, everybody falls. <laughs> Yeah, so we also shot in Osaka. A couple of the shots, we only had one, one take because of how busy it was, and as soon as you start jumping around, everyone swarms to that. And we were doing this one particular shot, and we, we planned, Connor and I had planned to jump off this bench, and then once we jumped off this bench, go over onto this path. And we got down there, and it's one shot, and there's people sitting on the bench, and we're just like, all right, well, hurdle it is, see you later. And <laughs> yeah, it just made it work. We Later on, we got round to this like police box. It's this cool jump across this river and we just kind of had to like sneakily like scooch past the police box and not let them see us and then just send it. And I mean, there's like six of us doing this gap. Like it's, <laughs> it is obvious. And when, like I said, when you do it, people just stop, stare. Because parkour is not a common thing in Japan at all. I mean, it's not really common anywhere, but in Japan especially, wow. Yeah, so that was, that was entertaining. So we went back to Tokyo to finish off the shoot. Literally the very final day, I was just running around some corner and just on a little bit of wet floor, just rolled my ankles, a fractured my ankle, and you know it was only a minor fracture, so I got quite lucky. Yeah, and then we, we carried on anyways. Scott and Connor had to kind of double me to finish off the last few patches. Everyone wore Harrison's clothes and trainers. When you watch the video, you need to like try and work out where where we are because you can see you might see Scott's big hands going in front of the camera. But yeah, we managed to um, do the roof gap at Mission as well, which Scott wasn't sure whether we'd do or not because it involved um, taking a rail out from on one side. It took us probably three hours one evening, um, but once it was clear, one of the last days we went back there and yeah, managed to get it done and shot the scene. Me and Scott chopping and changing, playing Harrison, and, but it all came together in the end and it was good to get it done. I'll make new crutches. <laughs> <laughs> Once we were back in Tokyo, obviously we had to host an Ampisound Jam at Mission. It was really nice of them to organise that for us and um, put the word out on social media. So we, we had a lot of people coming down to meet us and train with us. You can tell why Japanese athletes are so good at flips and tricking, because it's built for that. I managed to find a few plyos in there though. That was lovely, mate. That was lovely. Well done. But yeah, it was really cool to train with them and see like how high level they are, which I didn't. I knew they were, but the amount of people and the, age, the like young ages of, of the athletes and how good they are, it's, it's amazing. It's just crazy to see. They, they know, people need to know more about Japanese athletes because yeah, they're, they're crazy, crazy guys. Yeah, and then another thing yeah, when we were in Tokyo, we I had to obviously rent an Evo. Uh, me and Scott went to pick it up and then I signed my life away. Promised I wouldn't do any initial D. Went to see the Gundam, which is like a massive robot. It's not Transformers, as I've been told many times. But it looks like a Transformer. It comes out and moves around a bit. Um, and then we went to Daikoku Futo, which is uh, like a ser motorway services inside a, like a load of bridges and roads. And um, it's a massive car meet. But yeah, the cars there, it was like every car you'd want to see. You thought, I thought it was going to be Japanese only and then there's even Lamborghinis and Ferraris pulling in. But um, yeah, it was cool to just drive the Evo in Japan. It was like an experience I never forget. Especially one point we were coming down this bridge and you could see the silhouette of Mount Fuji there in the background. And um, yeah, it was just like really cool. And then we obviously went Shibuya through the crossing, yeah, playing the Tokyo Drift music. Me and Harry being Larry in Japan in an Evo. Yeah, it was wicked. Yeah, so just yeah, massive thank you to Hello My Name Is for making the whole trip possible. It was something, a trip I'll never forget and I don't think I'll ever go on another, another trip like it. Yeah, being there was awesome. It's, it's quite hard to explain it really, unless you're there, but it's like I'm still reflecting on it because it's such a big trip. But thank you, Hello My Name Is, and Ampisound. For creating Ampisound, Hello My Name Is, but he's getting ready to turn off camera, and everyone, for being alive and existing, because if you weren't, we wouldn't have been able to do it.